I practiced hundreds of product design cases. I still couldn't crack the case. Guess what? I just got an offer from Expedia. Do you want a free ticket to Hawaii? Oh. Can I get a family discount for the free flight? <laughs> we don't even look alike. <laughs> Put a manager case interview is very hard. Especially when it's very time consuming to practice these cases without the right resources and guidance. In this video, I'm going to show you the most effective way to nail the product manager case interviews in six steps. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee from drnancylee.com. I help people transition from worker bee to product manager and business leader. To learn the most effective way to become a product manager, you should click this bell button and subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video every Wednesday. If you like any of the tips I provide today, make sure to hit the like button so that more people will discover this organic content. Last week, my student got five offers again from Microsoft, Expedia, Chase, ad tech companies, and I'm so proud of them. Today, let me show you the behind the scenes secret about how we practice these product manager case interviews and nail those offers. And on top of that, give you some sample examples. How do we answer the most popular product manager case interview questions? So let's look into today's interview question. Design an Uber app for people with disabilities. So whenever people talk about product sense, product design, product case interview, as all some similar, they are very similar type of cases for you to solve within 45 minutes. In the interview, when you hear this case, you need to immediately to clarify some questions you have for them and then show them the six steps you're going to use to crack the case. For example, I would say, thank you for the case. What I'm going to do today is to understand the mission and why and understand the user, prioritize the pain point and also come up with those solutions. So you need to let the interviewer understand your logic flow in a very high level. Now let me tell you how to solve this case by inviting my teaching assistant. Dun -dun! Step number one is the mission and why. You need to talk about why this is an important problem to solve and how is this in alignment with company's mission. For example, for people with disabilities, I would say I can imagine how hard is it for people with disabilities to even like use the app, collect information, even get into the car? And these people really need the help the most. However, most of the enterprise companies, they do not design their app with the priorities of people with disabilities. So they really need to help very critical problem for us to solve. And then you align the mission with the problem we need to solve. Before you go into any interview, you need to Google the mission of any companies. For example, Facebook mission is bring people closer together by building communities. Apple's mission is to enable people to do things they're not capable of doing before. So the perfect alignment with the missions of those companies. After you talk about the mission and why, you need to ask a sequence of clarifying questions to the interviewer for you to better understand the case. And some interview questions could also involve like, is there anything I missed or why type of questions. And I have prepared a list of clarifying questions you should ask during the interview. You can directly download those questions right here. Step number two is user segmentation. You cannot just design the app for everybody. You have to put your customers into different segmentations because each segmentation has different needs. So I will segment the customers in the following ways. Within among the customers, people, the biggest mistake people always forget is only talk about the blind people, the riders, but they forgot to talk about the drivers because they need to serve each other in this process as well. And within the riders, we can break the people with disabilities into different kinds of subcategories. For example, People are blind and deaf, mental disabilities, and also handicapped. Then you continue to break down the drivers into different customer segmentation. There's a typical mistake people make once they segment the customer. They forgot to show the empathy of the customers. You need to use each sentence to describe who are the customers, who they are, why you break them into this kind of segmentations. And after that, you prioritize your customers and tell them which one are you going to design the solution for in this case. Because there's, we only have 45 minutes. There's no time we design solution for everybody. But in reality, it's very likely you're going to design solution for majority of the customer segmentations here. So at here, I will prioritize the blind people and drivers without handicap accessibilities and circle them on the board. When you prioritize customer segmentations, you need to tell them your prioritization frameworks. So usually I will use the impact, the size of market, and also the urgency of the needs from those customers. 
you can use many different ways to prioritize your customers. Feel free to check out another ProtaSense mock interview I did with Intuit Product Manager in Crystal, and she actually used a very different way to segment the customers and the prioritize them. After you prioritize all your customers, you need to show them the pain point, which is our third step. When we talk about pain point, you need to come up with top three pain point for each of the prioritized customer segmentation. Do not only to come up with a pain point for blind people because drivers also have pain points. Just imagine that, how hard it is for drivers to even communicate with people who are blind and also pick them up. So therefore make sure you talk about both type of end users pain point. Now let's come up with three pain points for each side. For the blind people, I came up with three pain points. First of all, they cannot get notifications when drivers are here. And second, they find it really hard to interact with the app. How would you click a button, even unlock the app, given you're blind? It's impossible. And even if drivers are here, how can you locate which one is a car for you to get on? So that's how you list all the pain points. Feel free to list more such as discriminations, many different ways, and just be aware of the time of your brainstorming session when you think about those pain points. Now let's also think about what different kind of pain points the drivers has. For drivers, I came up with three pain points. For example, they might think about how do I communicate with people who are blind? Do I call them? Should I wave to them? They cannot even see me. You could also be thinking about what a seating requirement, how many blind people, how much space is required, what should my car set up for people who are blind. And on top of that, may also have some COVID concerns as well. So you just need to write down all the top three pain points for each users. And after you write them down, make sure this is very important. As a product manager, we need to show the empathy of end users. You need to describe each of the pain points with specific rationale. How hard is it to show that you're wearing the shoes of the customers and you should fall in love with your customers. All of me loves all of you. This is very critical or you might fail the interview. They will say that you don't have customer empathy. Step number four is prioritization. So here is our prioritization framework. We need to prioritize which pain point we're going to solve in this case study. And as I said, we cannot solve all the problems with the best prioritization framework. This is a typical framework I use when we prioritize a customer pain point. They are impact of those pain points. How bad is the pain point? And second is the urgency of the problem, the urgency of the pain point. And third is the size, the size of market, the size of problem. Does one person suffer from it or lots of them suffer from it? And then you can put all the pain points into your prioritization framework and tell the end interviewers why you prioritize that way. And here, if I go into any interview, I would prioritize blind people not able to interact with the app. I believe it is the hardest one. Most people suffer from this. It's the biggest impact. If you cannot interact with the app, there's no way you can get into the car. This is step one. And the urgency is also very high. They need to get access to the app right away. So therefore, I prioritize this one. From the driver's perspective, I would prioritize not able to communicate with the like blind people. So those are the two pain points I prioritize. Feel free to comment down below and let me know what else you want to prioritize and why. If you have a different type of prioritization framework, please let me know as well. Comment down below. Step number five is to brainstorm the solutions. I usually recommend people to come up with three solutions in an interview. In real life, you can come up with 10 or 20, no problem. In interview, let's come up with top three. Among the top three, we need to be strategic about what we say, what we select as a top three. Among the top three, you can come up with an okay solution, and you should also come up with your best solution. And then the third one is you need to come up with a moonshot solution. So let me define moonshot. So moonshot is something like it's very hard to achieve, just as Elon Musk. Everything Elon Musk does is like moonshot ideas, sending men to the Mars, to the Neuralink. That's an examples of moonshot idea. In order to get A plus answer, I recommend all of you guys to come up with your best moonshot ideas and the best realistic ideas and an okay idea and show all the three on the board. So let me write down my idea as well. Right now, you should start brainstorming on your own as well. I just came up with my three ideas. So the okay idea is human assisted call centers, which is the blind people can directly call somebody and that someone and that person on the, the other side of the phone can call an Uber app for the blind people. This is an okay idea. It's just showing you have an idea. 
But the second idea is the best idea, which is the voice control idea. Like lots of you guys should have this idea already and have the blind people to do voice control and tell the app, open the app, call me a ride, and the ride is five minutes away so that you can interact directly with the app through all the voice control and also simplify the process for them to order an app through voice control. The third idea is a my moonshot idea, dun, 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 and which is the brain chip. <laughs> It's crazy, so in Moonshot, you don't need to implement. Uh, my Moonshot idea is, can we just do something like what Elon Musk does and put the chip into, oh, uh, into people's brains so that they can think about ordering app, they just remote interact with the app by themselves. So this is totally Moonshot. We are not going to prioritize this, but you need to come up with at least one Moonshot idea to show them you're thinking outside of the box. Number six is the trade-off and the prioritizations. After we have all the three ideas, you need to show the interviewer what is the trade-off and which one would you prioritize as the final solution and recommendation for the interviewer. So let me show you my typical prioritization framework. They are the effectiveness of solving the problem and the engineering effort. We don't want to spend lots of engineering effort to solve a small problem, right? So it's opposite. And the third is implementation and adoption difficulties. You can always add other prioritization metrics at here, such as risk and other factors. Feel free to modify based on your own ideas. And after you list all your prioritization framework and put all your solutions one, two, three into this table, so it's very easy for interviewer to see this, how you prioritize and give them a score. And then you talk about why something was prioritized, something wasn't. If you write it down like this, it's very straightforward and also will save you lots of time during the interview. By now, you have learned the most effective way to ace the product design interview. The next step is find your peers to practice this framework and those cases with you so that you can nail the offer very quickly. I have an exclusive product manager communities where people join to find the mock interview partners and also share the job referrals within different tech companies. So feel free to scan this barcode to join our LinkedIn group and submit your application to join as well. If you like all the amazing content I provided and helping you to get A plus answer in the product manager interview so feel free to hit the like button and share this content with everybody who need to see this as well. All right, feel free to check out the mock interview content and sample answers I have for other interview questions as well. I'm going to see you next time. This is Dr. Nancy Lee. Bye.